A little while ago, I posted a video on YouTube Shorts and TikTok asking you what questions you had about photography and videography. Today, I'm gonna answer them. It literally just started raining outside. I can hear it pitter pattering against the window, but we're just gonna we're just gonna push through this. So I recently just graduated from university with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Photography Studies. I've been shooting professionally part time for the past few years, and now I'm doing it full time. Oh my God, do you hear that? That just started like right now. What the hell? Anyway, yeah, I've been doing this for a while. I have a good amount of experience and I asked you guys, what do you want to know? I had a list of questions right here and we're going to go through some of them today. Do you need to get like a degree? Cause I want to become a photographer. So yeah, although I do have a photography degree, you absolutely don't need one to become a photographer. In the world of photography and video, pretty much no one cares where you went to school, what they care about is your portfolio and what your actual results look like. A strong portfolio is way more important than a resume in this world. There are definitely benefits of going to school, like the structure and sort of forces you to create on a regular basis. And you know, you're learning from certified professionals who are really good at what they do. But that being said, pretty much everything that I learned in school could be learned online. How do I start learning to edit videos? I want the best way. I'd recommend picking what software you want to learn in because they're all a little bit different. I edit in Premiere Pro. It's sort of an industry standard and that's probably what I'd recommend if you want to get into this professionally. So I'd start by watching a basics tutorial, learning sort of the basic functions of Premiere Pro like this one that I created a little while ago. And then once you understand sort of the fundamentals, you can go into more in-depth tutorials about very specific editing techniques and build up your knowledge that way. It'll definitely take a little while to get comfortable editing, but you'll get there. Do all photographers excessively edit their final takes or go with the natural beauty? This seems like a bit of a loaded question, but I'll try and answer it. So no, a lot of photographers don't edit their photos. Some of them edit them a lot. It completely depends on the photographer and also what they're shooting. If your only experience with photography is through social media like Instagram, then yeah, you're going to see a lot of very overly edited, filtery kind of looking photos. Cause that's like the Instagram style and I do that too. However, if I'm doing something like headshots, I'm barely editing. I'm probably just gonna do some skin touch-ups and that's it. There are scenarios where you do creative edits and there's scenarios where you don't, but it's also entirely up to the individual photographer. How did you get into photography and videography? I actually first really started getting into videography by watching Film Riot on YouTube. They had all these cool tutorials for how to use After Effects and do cool effects like a Harry Potter wand or like a lightsaber. And I thought that was just the coolest thing. I'd use my family camera and force my brother to record videos with me so that I could practice my visual effects. Then in 10th grade, I was able to do a media arts class where I did photography and videography and I loved it. I did that all the way through school and decided that that's what I wanted to do with my career. And here I am. What school did you go to for photography? And was it just a photographer course or also business? So I went to Ryerson University in Toronto and I got a Bachelor of Fine Arts, which means the degree was fine arts focused. I had a lot of art history classes, art theory classes, and classes learning the technical photography skills like composition, studio lighting, and that sort of stuff. There was basically no talk of business because it was a fine arts program, not a business program. But I'd recommend if you do end up going to school for photography, definitely take some business classes because that'll help you a ton. How to start photography on a phone camera, the same way you start photography at all. You can learn the fundamentals of photography using your phone the same way you do with a camera. And by fundamentals, I'm mainly talking about the exposure triangle and composition. So focus on learning that stuff first and then maybe look at getting a camera. How do I photograph lightning? Lightning happens super fast, right? So you might think you need a high shutter speed, a very fast shutter speed to capture lightning. Uh, you actually want to go the opposite way. Now, as a disclaimer, I've never done this, but theoretically, this is how you would photograph lightning. You're going to set up your tripod on a camera with a wide angle lens pointing out over a rainy thunderstormy area. You're going to set a long exposure like one second or more and then set it on an interval timer to take photos repeatedly. When you do a long exposure, even if something in the image happens for only a second, if it's very bright like lightning or like a camera flash, it's still going to show up in the image, even though it was just a split second. So if you do like a one second or five second exposure and a lightning bolt happens to hit during that exposure, it's going to show up in the image. So you put your camera in a direction, you set it up to just repeatedly keep taking photos throughout the thunderstorm. And if you're lucky, you'll end up with a lightning bolt in the shot. Best Canon lens for portrait and street photography, one lens only. Canon's Nifty 50, 50 millimeter f1.8 is a great lens just for all around stuff. It's really good for portraits. It's good for street photography. It's a really great bang for your buck lens, but it's not super high end. So it won't be super sharp, especially at f1.8. That's the only downside, but it's nice and cheap and it's a good all around lens. I used it for years. Best full frame entry level camera. Full frame entry level camera is kind of an oxymoron. They don't really go together because full frame is more of a professional level feature and not something you really need in an entry level camera. For example, in Canon's lineup, the Canon EOS RP would be the cheapest full frame sensor, but that camera is a few years old now and the Canon R seven just came out, which is probably a better camera, especially if you also want to do some video. It's a crop sensor, 
but it has a lot better features. So I'd say don't get too hung up on the whole full frame thing. You don't really need it. Even if you're shooting professionally, I wouldn't worry about it too much. How can I make a career from this? I love doing it. Well, I'd recommend getting some business classes and really focusing in as a business. I can't really give you a great answer on this because I'm still trying to figure out how to do it myself. It's tricky because you can get paid a lot to do photo and video work, but it's about getting a consistent client base and consistent amount of people coming in so that you're doing work consistently. Unfortunately, I can't really give you any great advice on this because yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out myself, but definitely having a business oriented mindset is going to help. What do you use to edit photos and videos and what do you recommend for beginners? Well, I use the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite for everything. I use Premiere Pro to edit videos. I use Lightroom to batch edit photos and I use Photoshop for more in-depth photo editing. Now, what would I recommend for beginners? This depends on whether you wanna eventually do this professionally or you're just doing it for fun. If you're just doing it for fun, there are some good free options out there. I don't really know a ton about them because again, I just use all Adobe stuff. Now, if you do wanna do this professionally though, I would recommend learning the Adobe Creative Cloud or something like DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut for video editing. These are all considered industry standards and the problem with using the free versions is that those skills don't really necessarily transfer over to the industry standard software, which means if you ever wanted to work for a studio that let's say only uses Lightroom, you need to know how to use Lightroom. And if you're not fluent with it right off the bat, they're probably not gonna hire you. So I would say if you wanna do this professionally, definitely learn the professional software because it's gonna help you a lot down the road. Can I use an older 2008 to 2010 camera and make some extra money? I'm actually gonna let my friend Anthony take this one. Here he is. Hey Anthony, can you use a 2008 to 2010-ish camera and like make some money with it? You can, you just need to understand the limitations of a 2008 camera. For example, older cameras may have lower megapixels or lower resolution or not as good dynamic range. So shoot outside during the day in sunlight so that you get the best image quality. Thanks Anthony. So can you make good money as a photographer? This is interesting. Anthony and I were just saying that a lot of the people we know who are photographers are just doing it part time. You absolutely can make great money as a photographer and the people who are very successful at it can make well over six figures, but it's a very small group of people that actually end up doing that. I'm not entirely sure why this is, but I think a large part of it has to do with the fact that photographers are just inherently really creative people and creative minds and business minds don't always work that well together. And so you end up with a lot of people that love doing photography for the passion of it and don't necessarily treat it like a business, which you kind of have to do if you want to make some money from it. Good point. Can you do something really good with the T2i? Well, just like Anthony said, yeah, you absolutely can get some good results out of older cameras. You just got to remember that they just lack some of the newer functionality. They might not be as good in low light. They might not shoot 4K video. There's a few things to consider and a few drawbacks, but no matter what camera you're using, you can still get good results out of it if you know the fundamentals of photography. You just have to recognize that there's gonna be limits when you use older gear. Best camera for vlogging and casual filming, 4K of course. This is a very generic question that I find I get asked a lot. What's the best camera for social media? What's the best camera for this type of photography? Guys, all cameras are basically the same these days. They're all great. Any camera made within the past couple years is going to be very good and high quality. Most cameras shoot 4K these days, not that you necessarily need 4K for social media, but if that's something that's important to you, lots of cameras do it, and they're all gonna look pretty good. Best way to sell photos. This is interesting because selling photos on its own is a pretty difficult thing to do. Like selling prints on a website. Say you're a landscape photographer, you have some really nice landscapes, you wanna sell some prints, and you just put them up on your website, that's great, but even if they're really nice photos, it's not super likely that you're going to sell a bunch of them. The best way to sell prints is to do photo shoots for people and then sell prints of those photos to those people. For example, I deliver all my photos on a website called PickTime, and when I send the gallery to them, they can choose on the gallery which photos they want to be printed and delivered to them. They can choose the size, if they want semi-gloss or matte, and they can choose exactly which photos they want and how many copies and have them sent right to them, and I make a bit of money off of that. That's probably the best way to make money selling prints because selling them just as like fine art prints on their own on your website, even promoting it on social media, you're probably not going to sell a ton doing it that way. Unless you're like semi-famous, that's about it. What's the best way to gain followers on Instagram? I don't know. This is one of those questions that I just don't really feel qualified to answer because I'm not huge on Instagram. I think just post consistently, post video content and hope for the best. There's obviously more specific advice out there for that, but I'm just not the person you wanna get it from. What are some important things you should consider when editing digital images to look like film? Well, the first important thing to consider is that there's no such thing as the film look. Every type of film looks different and has its own unique color profile. So if you really wanna emulate the film look without actually shooting film, what I think you should do is look up specific types of film and try to emulate that look. Because going for like a generic film look 
it's not really a real thing. You also have to keep in mind the film look is kind of a trend right now. So if you edit photos in this style, in a few years, it's probably not going to be as popular and those photos aren't gonna age that well. It's again, one of those things that's kind of considered like vintage now and it's very popular on Instagram and it does look cool if it's done right, but don't think that you need to edit in the sort of vintage style. And if you do, maybe also do a non-film edit, especially if these are photos that you're delivering to someone in like five, 10 years, it's not gonna be like trendy anymore and it's gonna look a little dated. But if you really want an authentic film look, I would highly recommend just shooting film. It's actually a really cool process and not too difficult once you get the hang of it. But that's all the questions I have today. Thank you guys for submitting your questions. I hope you learned something. In the description down below, you can check out my TikTok page, my Instagram. Follow me there. I post content all the time, especially on TikTok. And if you enjoyed this video, consider hitting like, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. And if you have any more questions for me, leave them in the comments down below and I'll try and answer them for you. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, you have to face it. Let's get back to basics. I'm gonna take the shot like it's a vaccination. I don't have the patience. I'm gonna shoot right now. Yeah, we undefeated. You gonna lose right now like click 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 swish i can switch it up anytime like this i'm a videographer and i'm on the verse so when i shoot my shot i don't you miss gonna take the shot take the shot take the shot